welcome back to my channel today i wanted to do a quick review of the still classic three ring binder i have been using this for about a month now so i wanted to share with you guys my thoughts after getting settled into the planner a bit more and just about the design in general so diving right in i got the still classics x uh, kelly may planner so this is like a limited edition collab that they did, but it's got a beautiful cream beige color. I was a bit worried that it was going to be yellowish because in some of the photos it just looked yellowish to me, but really it has just a nice pebbled creamy look to it. It's got this little bit of gold hardware in the front and then gold embossing on the back with the logo. Now, one thing I will say is my first planner that I ordered for them actually came damaged. So the pen loop on the inside here was sewn crooked and you couldn't put a pen in it. So they sent me a new one and the new one also seems to be a little off. Maybe I'm just nitpicky, but you can see it doesn't really want to lay like that. It opens up and I notice one of these prongs is loose but it's a perfect giggly good planner and I already reached out to customer service one time so I don't want to bother them again but they are a new company so it's understandable that they have some hiccups that they're still trying to get through but overall the feeling of it is really great and the aesthetic of it is beautiful so I think for the price as an entry level six ring binder it's pretty good now if we open it up on the inside here we have three pockets which you can see behind my little notes there's a large one two smaller ones and then same here in the back there's a larger one and then these ones are pretty narrow but it's perfect size for these little page flags or stickers or if you want to put more note cards now this dashboard um, I designed and printed myself, so this is my own take on it, but usually when you open it up there is a own by page where it's like this planner belongs to. And then there's on the back of it a little about page that has a Spotify playlist so you could listen to music while you're planning. And then it goes right into your vision board. Now you could use this to print out little goodies like what I have on the front here and paste it in for your vision board. I however just wanted to do a list of my goals for 2024 because I have a vision board on Pinterest that I go to a little bit more. Maybe I'll do that in the future but for right now personally I like having a list. So then we go into the bills and subscriptions tracker. This was a big one when I wanted to get this planner was I love having all of my bills in order by the date. So that way, when I get paid bi-weekly, I can plan out which bills are gonna be going on what paycheck. And I spaced it out, but there's plenty of space to add utilities, electricity, like whatever bills you have, this is a great place. And you can check it off if you want each month. I just have the date that I know it's gonna go through because they go through the same date every month. And that just helps me be a little bit more prepared for when my bills come in. Next, we have the rituals and routine. So to be productive, to focus, what you're choosing to feel, all those things so you can start the new year with a clear idea. Also has your sleep routine, morning ritual, and evening ritual, which was really fun to plan out. I had like a larger list on my notes on my phone of like my morning routine with like all the times. So this is kind of a condensed version. One thing I will say though, because this is at the front of my planner, I only, <laughs> hello cat. I only come up here in the beginning of the month to get the bills. You can see my cat's tail there, don't mind him. So I don't look at this often and I feel like I just forget about it and then I'm not reminding myself to be accountable for like these routines and rituals. So it's nice to have, but to be honest, in the past like month and a half of using this uh, planner, I have kind of forgotten about this page a bit. Now, after the rituals and routines, it goes straight into the months. Now, 
This is from January. It's a bit of a mess because I've already planned in it. So I'm gonna take you to March, which I haven't started planning in yet. So this is the beginning of March. This is what all of the months will look like. There is a quote page and then your goals page. It starts off with the goal that you wanna do for this month, your motivation, and then your action plan. So you can take a big goal and break it up into more manageable chunks. You also have your deadlines and everything and then a reward for if you reach that goal, which is cool if you are wanting to, let's say, get a new outfit, but you wanna declutter your closet first. It's a really good way of like breaking up like declutter your closet, do shoes, hanging drawers, and then reward yourself with that new outfit. So that is a really nice feature for goal planning. Next, we have three habit trackers that you can fill out. And I know it's the same thing as with the rituals page is I just don't flip to this page often. So I kind of forget about them, which that could just be a me thing. I just need to be better about going back and filling in my habit trackers. And then a little section for notes where you could put quotes, stickers, whatever strikes your fancy. Now, right after there are two blank pages for notes. This is where I like to do my bills breakdown so I know what bills are coming for what paycheck. And then usually I'll do a giant monthly to-do list right here because I just have a lot to do and it's nice seeing it all in one spot. But this is just a great blank canvas for you to fill with whatever you need for your goals. Now, next we get into the month, and one nice thing about this planner is the month is the whole page. It's very big. There's no extra stuff at the bottom, so you have quite a bit of space to write in on these days, and then you have a small column on the side for notes. Now, something funny I do want to point out, like I said, this is a small business. She's doing great. They're, they're still getting started, but they forgot to write March in the top here, so if you like go to February... See, it says February, same thing with January. And then this one just says month. So I think maybe it's because month and March, they both start with M, it was whatever, but that was a funny little quirk that I noticed with this. So after the monthly page, it goes straight into the day-to-day -day checklist. Now she has a couple different layouts on her website that you can get. This is the one that I went with. There's other ones that have you know, the to-do list and then like a section on top that's just blank. Um, but for me, I'm a list person, so this is really cool. So each day you've got a very generous to-do list for all of your tasks. You also have a really nice water tracker that's kind of low-key up in the corner here, which that has been nice because it does make me think like, oh, how many glasses of water have I had today? So it's a good reminder to check that off. And then a line of gratitude. I like having that line of gratitude because if it was on a separate page, I probably would forget about it, but having it right there every day at the bottom is just a nice reminder to reflect on the day and what I was thankful for. And then we see down here, we've got Saturday and Sunday, which are slightly shorter lists just so everything could fit on the page, and then a shared list of gratitude right there. Now, after your horizontal to-do list page, we go into the vertical tracker. This is one of the cool things about the planner is that it has both. So... You can kind of mix it up a little bit. You can have one messy, one clean, like brain dumps, whatever. So each day is broken up into three columns and then Saturday, Sunday are broken up into two columns. I do kind of wish that there was more room on Saturday and Sunday, but one thing is because it's squished together like that, there's more width in each column. I've seen some planners, the columns are really skinny and it's just hard to write everything that you need to write. So it is nice that these are a bit wider. And this is a great space if you wanted to break it up in like your mornings, afternoons, evenings, whatever. What I've been doing is I've been doing my meals, my schedule, and then my exercise. So I'll show you an example of that really quick. So this is one that I filled out, but I haven't started the week yet. So I'll put like my breakfast, my dinner, I'll do my blocks for work, and then movement. So whatever kind of physical activity I wanna do. And this is what I have found works best for me at the moment. And then if we go back, you can see I have it laid out with my to-do list for the day, what bills are gonna be going through that day, and then my homework assignments that I have. 
Now I did get the highlighters from Still Classic also. These are really nice kind of pastel -y colors. So you can see I've used the purple for my homework, the green for payday, the red for my bills, and then I'll use this beige one just to like highlight the days. So I'll give you a quick example. So it's just a really nice kind of light peachy toned highlighter. And then the blue one I will use for my appointments, which you can see this is the current week. Crazy mess, but my appointments I will highlight in blue. Another thing I got from their website was this Today Ruler. So this is really nice. It just snaps into the binder and you've got a little Today tab. Just it was really easy to flip through whatever week you're in and that has really come in handy. Now overall, I think this is a really great entry level six ring binder. This is my first time using a six ring. I've usually been a moleskin or a Leuchtschirm, I think that's how you pronounce it, person. So the rings are a bit on the small side. I think this is about two centimeters across. Now you can't fit the entire ear in here, especially because you have the horizontal and the vertical like per week, kind of doubles up how many pages you have. But regardless, I've really been enjoying using this planner. This binder has been really fun and I'm still putting my own flair on it a little bit by printing out these cards and making my own dashboards and little goodies. But overall, I think if you're looking for a budget-friendly entry-level journal, this is a really good one to look into. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Still Classic 3-Ring Planner. I've been enjoying using this planner and putting my own flair into it a little bit more with my own printable stuff. It's been really fun to play with, and I do have more plans to jazz it up in the future, so stay tuned for that. Let me know if you guys are using any of the Still Classic planners. They've got a couple different ones out there and a couple different layouts. So I would love to hear your opinions in the comments below. But if you enjoyed, please feel free to like, subscribe, and stick around for more planner stationery budgeting goodies. Have a good one.